again for tuning in. We are glad that you are actually uh, again following us. Thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. They help us uh, again know uh, how much we mean to you, but also they help us form our next topics. We keep discussing not just your regular thing that you'll find on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We look at the interesting texts. When we have um, leadership lessons, we decided not to look at the people that are obviously leaders and people talk about them. We took Peter who I think in, um, you know, in many ways, people don't consider him a leader, and people don't remember his strengths, and sometimes he's judged very harshly. But again, we have gone episode after episode, looking at the life of Peter, and we are trying our best today to conclude. <laughs> if we don't, we continue, because we want to make sure yeah. we, we are able to talk about Peter mm. again uh, in the best way possible. We glean as much as we can get mm. from his life. Again, we are here with Reverend Fury mm. discussing this. Uh, welcome there. Yeah. yeah, and uh, um, we, we, we look at Peter now. Um, Jesus has has is has died mm. right and uh, the women have come with a report mm. uh, that he is risen nah. right he is risen <laughs> i mean the first thing that uh, peter and crew do is uh, dismiss them mm. uh, say i mean what's going on until yeah. the women said come and see yeah. you know uh, 
um, and Peter actually runs mm. to the tomb. Mm. Uh, again, uh, we find uh, uh, a continuing moment there where they did, this idea of Jesus rising from the dead <laughs> did not quite register well. Yeah. You know, it didn't register well um, uh, among the disciples. Yeah. It didn't register well because they all seem to be doubtful. They all seem to be like they're not believing this. And Jesus, I mean, Peter goes in and uh, finds that actually, you know, it's true mm. that, uh, uh, that, 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 that Jesus is not where, you know, they had, they had laid him. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but I will to say, uh, because the resurrection, even to this day, mm. which to me is the most powerful, the most the, the most differentiating mm. aspect uh, in terms of the Christian faith and other faiths, uh, we still treat it in an abstract way. Uh, we don't quite bring it to our day-to-day -day lives, mm. we seem to forget that. Um, and it seems still abstract as if it's a future event uh, that maybe cannot be applied in our day-to-day -day <laughs> lives. Uh, but I want you to just, because Peter is right there, where he's uh, still not uh, quite connecting that, mm. uh, that, 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 that Jesus has, uh, has risen. And uh, actually, women, the women said uh, he, he's risen. And he said, you know, mm. go ahead. He's gone ahead of you. you know? Yeah. And you'll meet him in a particular, you know, in in in, uh, in, uh, in the city. You meet him there, mm. and so that understanding of the resurrection uh, still doesn't sink on our day-to-day -day, uh, applications. <clears throat> and and it's understandable when you think about it, because Peter was there. It was prophesied. He had seen mm. Jesus raise the dead, mm. literally, even the buried, like Lazarus. So Peter was always there when Jesus was doing all these things. But his own resurrection is what he doubted, that he himself would actually resurrect. And even when the women came, it's funny that Jesus would allow women to beat Peter to the grave. Mm. You know, they went fast. And they even met, like, you know, Jesus and the, and, and, and the angels. And so they have even a better explanation than Peter. But Peter still goes anyway. He runs. And I imagine when he's running, what is running in his mind? Mm. And he's thinking, um, now I'll find him there. Or they are lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll prove them wrong. Mm. But he's running there and he gets and he finds, surely, this has come to pass. That's true. And so even in our days, sometimes we, we treat resurrection as something that, sometimes we even shy to talk about it. Mm. We talk about the Jesus, good things he did, but resurrection is where we draw the line. Ah, mm -hmm. You know, talk about it, I don't know very well. But I was, uh, as I was um, <clears throat> listening to one, one Muslim convert called Nabel Qureshi online, and he said he wanted Islam to be true. He didn't want to believe Islam because he loved it. He loved Islam, but he wanted it to be true. So he went for evidence, and that's where issues began. Mm -hmm. Because if, if the things that you were told were true had no evidence in nature. There was no evidence of how Muhammad came carrying the Quran. There was no evidence. There was no evidence that, that indeed Muhammad got these, um, you know, like visions. There was no evidence. No one else saw them apart from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is this? And he tried many things, and he realized, ah, no. There's something wrong. Mm. Then he came and said, let me check Christianity. And he was shocked. And there was evidence after evidence, not biblical, historical. Mm. And he began seeing it's true, it's true, it's true, until he got to the truth of the death mm. and resurrection. And he realized it's true. That beat him so much. Mm. And for years, he couldn't reconcile. He knew Christianity to be true. But he didn't want it. Mm. He hated it. Mm. But he knew Islam to be false. But he loved it. Mm. And then for him, the, the greatest problem was, immediately he would turn to Christianity, a persecution would begin from day one. Mm -hmm. He would bring all you know, his parents into disrepute. They, they would be ashamed. They would be talked about very badly. And he himself would be facing death. So he knew, for him, he kept on wondering why preachers preached the way they did. Mm -hmm. Because they kept on saying, when you come to Jesus, he will take care of your psychological needs, he will give you these big buildings and all that, you will have a peace in your heart. But for him, Jesus brought the opposite. He would have no peace in his heart mm -hmm. because he has done a very bad thing, especially to the mother who brought him up, and to his teacher who taught him the madrasa, and to his father who was part of the evangelists mm -hmm. within the Muslim world. So. There was no peace that was being promised when he comes to Christ. There was no safety. There was, it was torture. 
there was no, like, you know, he would affirm you. There's no affirmation. Mm -hmm. We are not to be ashamed. So the promise was the opposite. But the truth was too strong to ignore. Mm -hmm. For me, I understood that. Mm -hmm. That there was nothing good that he was coming to, to get through Christ. Yeah. But the truth could not be ignored. Mm -hmm. And so one day he had to just accept that indeed, he, because I know Christ died and resurrected, and there's no way to show that he died again. Mm -hmm. He actually ascended into heaven. All men, everyone must then believe in him, mm -hmm. and including him, although his life was to go down. And indeed, his life became very terrible for several years. Mm -hmm. And later on, Yaku died of cancer. And the parents thought it's because of the curse of Muhammad and all that. Mm -hmm. But he died of cancer. A medical doctor in the Islam world <laughs> going through facts, not the Bible, facts, mm -hmm. and saying, you can't ignore the truth of the resurrection. You know, you know when you are at it, uh, and you've talked about death, right? Mm -hmm. um, and how they, because the resurrection, we have to make a big deal out of it. Yeah. We must, because um, if we don't make a big deal of the resurrection, or if it's not a big deal anyway, then, I mean, Paul says we are to be pitied, yeah. uh, you know, above all people. Uh, but even it's a St. Paul who says that I, I want to know him mm. and the power of his resurrection. Yeah. So you can tell that there is something here that, mm. uh, uh, that, 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 that sometimes maybe we don't grasp as well. But yeah. we want um, uh, uh, even all of us, even our viewers, to really take the resurrection seriously. Mm. It's not an abstract event. It's a historical event. Mm. It's a historical event. And then uh, this resurrected Jesus, his spirit is within us. Mm. What does that tell you? It tells you that you are bold, mm. that anything that would bring death, mm. anything that would bring destruction, you know, you are bold. What the resurrection spirit should do is give you an, a hope that doesn't die, isn't mm. it? Yeah. A hope that doesn't yeah. die, that in every circumstance you're hopeful. Mm -hmm. Not positive thinking like, but you are hopeful because Christ Jesus um, is in you that, and he is alive in you, like mm -hmm. alive. And so even the most threatening of circumstances, there is no more walking from a distance like Peter did. There's no more walking at a distance. It's we are frontliners. Mm. We are frontliners. When people look back, when people want to walk at a distance, we are frontliners. When people are hopeless, we are the hope givers. And we're not just giving pep talks to people. We are just telling people it's just a matter of time. You will see God at work here. In this circumstance, no matter how dire it may look, you will see uh, a life coming into this circumstance. And I'm not pretending, I'm not just saying things it is a fact. You shall see life. Because even death, mm -hmm. where is your sting? That, I mean, death has lost its power. Mm -hmm. No power. Resurrection power. There's no greater power than that. Mm. There's no greater power. And when Christ breathes that resurrection upon anyone, anything dead must resurrect. Mm -hmm. It's not that... I mean, it's not that you, when, when he breathes, then some things are trying to organize themselves, wondering, do we resurrect or yeah, not? Yeah. Are we part of the resurrection? No, we must resurrect. And it's not just within us, but even in our circumstance. Mm. I've had people talk about, uh, say, Christians are becoming too hopeful and all that. Our hope is not positive thinking. Exactly. It is based on reality. Mm. Like if, like the way I was at MC on Saturday, I've never been one, but um, I, I went to the kitchen and saw that food was ready. Mm. So when I came, I announced, and I know there is food. So don't leave. I was not saying it because I think in such events there should be food. Mm. I had seen food and it was enough for everyone. Mm. So I already, it was a bit of a fact. My hope that we will eat, it was on a fact. Mm. We have seen the resurrection. We shall resurrect mm. that even, you know, after we die, we shall resurrect because we have seen it in action. Mm. There is no situation that is not hopeful. Mm. There's no situation that is beyond control. Even at that point, we are hopeful. Mm. I talked about my friend Nabil Kureshi. When he was dying of cancer, he would talk in his bed mm. and say, I am comfortable. Mm. In, I'm getting into the hands of the one who saved me. Mm. The resurrection truth is too powerful for me to sulk. Mm. I can't. So he's sick, but he's saying, all of us will go through this way mm. and I am going ahead of you. 
and it's okay. Mm. Because the fact of the resurrection is right at my face. And therefore, it makes my <laughs> troubles even less. You know, I'm thinking that uh, uh, when the resurrection bug <laughs> catches you, mm. you become so hopeful. Yeah. You become ridiculous, yeah. you know. <laughs> and to people around you, you become really ridiculous, you know. Mm. Here comes the optimist. No, no, no. Mm. I'm not the optimist. I'm the resurrectionist. Mm. You know, yes, man, I'm not the optimist. I'm the resurrectionist. Here comes him, you know. Mm. Here comes her. And as a leader, I'm thinking to myself, mm. you're leading a group of people. You're leading an organization. And uh, and, and you have, you believe in this, uh, in this, and the, uh, the living hope, right? Mm. Uh, and I, as a leader, then you become one who really inspires your team. That's the thing. Uh, because you're not cheering them on. You're not giving them pep talks. No, mm. you are actually giving them a real hope. You know mm. that God is with us, and because God is with us, it's going to be okay. Whether we win or we we lose, mm. at some point there shall be a testimony of victory for all of us. You know, mm. so it is. It is also uh, this reality of the resurrection applies across, uh, and especially for a leader, it is so important uh, that you uh, that you have this uh, resurrectionist spirit, uh, because there are many situations you're going to face. You lead all. All kinds of people and this hope helps you a lot in your leadership you know uh, 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 pastor David you know Peter mm. um, the women are told by by Jesus uh, go tell the disciples and Peter mm. the last encounter mm. that Peter had with Jesus was mm. not nice it was, it was nasty <laughs> it was nasty I'm sure that he would have buried his face mm. at seeing Jesus you know mm. uh, he would have just like oh my god there's a memory he had mm. that I disappointed you yeah. but he Jesus on this resurrection side, he says, go tell my disciples and Peter. Mm. Now, these disciples had fled, remember? Yeah, you know, yeah. Apart from the women, you know, <laughs> these disciples had fled. Mm. Now, their leader also had not just fled, mm. but denied Jesus. Yeah. He had done the worst. <laughs> Harry, the ones who ran off. At least, you know, at least we didn't know what they are. Yeah. Still. But this one had denied, <coughs> you know. He had just even fled the faith. He had <laughs> fled. He had fled the association. Uh, he had spiritually fled. These, mm. had, these ones others had physically fled. This one had spiritually fled and disconnected. Mm. But Jesus says, go tell my disciples and, and Peter. And Peter. What does that say? Um, I'd like to answer that in a story. Mm -hmm. A story I read somewhere which uh, was powerful. Mm -hmm. The way um, some servants were, were, were left to take care of, of some, some place by a master who was very brutal. And, uh, but when he went, they heard that the battle he had gone to, everybody had died. Mm -hmm. So they decided to share the kingdom among themselves. And they shared. And they, they did very bad things. But then, out of the blues, he came back. So the four of them, now wondering what to do, three of them fell before the master and said, we are sorry. Forgive us. We didn't even know you were alive. And they begged and begged and begged. One of them said, I'll die like a man. Mm. There's no way this guy is going to let us live. He is going to kill us. Mm. So I will not fall on my knees and beg him. I'll die like a man. So he sat somewhere behind with indifference, waiting for his time of death. I will not die on my knees. Mm. But this, this master forgives the three. So they go happily. Then he walks to the one who, who says, I'll die like a man. You know, just passes back and tells him, mm. you are forgiven too. And he couldn't get it, you know, mm. <laughs> because he thought we are forgiven because we bowed down. Now this guy, even the guy who, is, mm. who doesn't want to ask for forgiveness, told you are forgiven. The master had already chosen. Mm. By the time he's coming, who, whatever they have done, you forgive them anyway. Mm. And you think about that, that these guys, had fled. Peter had denied, but Jesus had decided in his heart, I'll forgive them. Mm -hmm. They are mine. And I'm, and I'm here to make sure that they will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And this is the team I chose. He is there for the team. And I'm sure the way they felt within them, that Jesus still cared for them, mm -hmm. that he will come to see them after fleeing. Uh, I'm sure they might have felt indebted mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And um, trying to move forward is something I was thinking. Eh? The difference between Peter, who before a woman couldn't uh, in, uh, you know, say, I know Jesus, and the Peter at Pentecost. Mm. 
that transformation is, cannot be explained biologically. Mm -hmm. You can't explain economically, say he got money. I mean, how do you explain that, Peter? Who people say you are drunk. Mm -hmm. Then he says, wait a minute. Drunk. Mm -hmm. And these are not few people. These are not people on a fire. Thousands. In an empire where Jesus was killed. This is the same people who killed Jesus. The same crowd would have said these drunk guys during the day killed them. Peter stands and preaches a long sermon. Mm. Looking at uh, the way the, the text is written, it must have been a very long sermon. Mm. And as he preaches with boldness, he did not call an otako. The otako called itself. They asked themselves, what ought we to do? Mm. They were pricked in their hearts mm. and asked, what ought we to do? Look at Peter. The power of resurrection mm. was at work in Peter. Mm. And mm. Peter was no longer the same again. Mm. There's no way that power of resurrection can work in you. And you continue being the coward you are. Mm. You continue being the person you were before. The one who deny and the one in denial. The one in doubt. No, there's mm. no denial, there's mm. no doubt. When the power of resurrection comes, then you become that Peter. Mm. And boldly say, you know, you are announcing to everyone yeah. that the Jesus who you crucified, mm -hmm. now God has made him both Lord and Savior. Mm. I mean, that was the statement for Peter, the Jesus. Now, before people, I mean, he's saying it before people. Mm. He's now not saying, you know, like, hey, I don't know him. <laughs> he's saying that Jesus yeah. you crucified, God has made him both Lord and and savior and it's amazing you know the way he is converted uh, and what what's also interesting is uh, how uh, the scriptures significantly use the character women character yeah to minister to peter the rock <laughs> you know uh, and of course the cultural aspect of that time you wouldn't have expected that uh, you know the, the, the women to be uh, the, 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 the the ones giving peter his rock status mm. you know Mm. Because his rock status had to come from both weakness and also uh, strength at the same time. And we find that there's a woman at, uh, at, the, at the cross, as mm. we were looking at the other, the other time. But there's also the woman now coming from the empty tomb, yeah. you know. Mm. And, uh, and these are, uh, the, the Peter cannot separate his strength, mm. you know. Cannot separate his movement from the role of these women. Uh, going forward. And then we see also, which is something that uh, is, you know, is very important, that Peter, um, in the, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he struggles with inclusion. Mm. You know, mm. he himself has been included. <laughs> uh, he was supposed to be bashed and he was supposed to be, you know, banished, you know, yeah. banish Peter, you know, mm. let him go, let him never return, you know, mm. but Jesus includes him. But when it comes to the, his dealing with Paul, his dealing with the Gentiles, mm. he, he seems to be like he still wants, he's caught in between. He's still not as inclusive as he should be. Mm. Dealing with Cornelius, he's saying, oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Uh, we Jews don't deal, you know, with that kind of, uh, and he uh, has a vision is coming like three times, you know, mm. uh, for him to be able to understand that uh, the same inclusion mm. that he was given at, you know, at the point the resurrection of Jesus Christ, go tell my disciples and the fallen Peter, you know, mm. uh, he is now being called also to be an agent of inclusion, to mm. include Cornelius, to include the Gentiles, mm. to include all these people. Uh, and that's very important because one once you have been included, then there is no reason why, you know, you should now be a person who excludes others or judges others or tells others that you, you are too far away from the grace, you know, uh, you are too removed from grace, you can't. I mean, once included, then you also become an agent of inclusion for others. Mm. Mm. And, and thus we see the conversion of Peter mm. being a process. It continues, it doesn't stop after the resurrection. He, of course, he becomes a great leader, but he still needs the help of God. Mm. There are areas of his life, and as you said, the inclusion part. When you look at the, at, the, at the story of Cornelius, there were two conversions there. Peter was also being converted mm. because Peter <clears throat> loved to preach to Jews, and for some time, he, he had gotten away with it because it was possible for him to go to towns where there are Jews and avoid Gentiles. But at this point, he thought to go to the house of a Gentile. Mm. Now that, he could not run away from it. So in that house, 
In fact, the Bible says, when he began speaking to them, he began by telling them, because salvation began with the Jews. Now, that's Peter mm. telling the Gentile that, like, feel privileged that we are here. But the Bible says, as he was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon Cornelius mm. and all the Gentiles in his house. Mm. It's like Jesus is telling him now, what are you saying? Mm. <laughs> you, you are talking about your salvation. He had not even led him to the prayer of salvation or anything. The Holy Spirit came upon them as they were. Mm. Because Jesus already decided, God has decided these Gentiles will receive salvation. Mm. So you are not going to become a hindrance. It is you who is going to change and include them. It is you who needs to include them. Mm. I have included them already. Yeah. So they are already in the kingdom. In this kingdom, they are already there. In terms of the plan of God, they are there. Mm. So you as an agent of that plan must learn to include everyone else. Yeah. And you said something interesting. I want to mention it. Uh, I know we have a few minutes towards the end. Mm. That the first encounter of Jesus and Peter in the house was through a woman. The mother-in-law. Hmm. That was the first encounter. That's the first miracle upon uh, the, the life of Peter. Hmm. I mean, of course, mother-in-law means Peter had a wife. Hmm. So it's, um, it's another woman there. And Jesus heals the mother-in-law and she serves them in the house of Peter. And you look at the history is that from there henceforth, Jesus lived in the house of Peter. Hmm. That's where he always was. In fact, Mary at some point came to get him. And they were outside with the brothers saying, I mean, we are here, outside. So where was Jesus? Mm. Inside the house of Peter. Mm. From there, Jesus is always with Peter. He's always like a brother to Peter. But Peter still needs internal conversion, mm. day in, day out. Mm. And that conversion at Cornelius' house was a big one. Mm. And so we cannot beat our chest and say, now I am there, I am fully formed. As a leader, now I am it. Mm. I'll write books. I'm going to be calling seminars only. Me, I am, you will still need to learn even mm -hmm. after. You know, and uh, uh, rightly put there. And I'm also uh, trying to connect the value of that weak point at the cross mm. uh, that Peter realized he is weak. Mm. And so when there was this instruction, do not leave Jerusalem until you have received power, mm. you know, until you have received power. Because of that moment of weakness, he was now even better positioned, right, mm. to receive help, you know. Mm. He was better positioned to receive power because yeah. he would say, I need it, yeah. you know, I need it. And so moments of weakness sometimes set us up you know, for us to receive power, to have new chapters of strength. Mm. Uh, and uh, especially if we work around them uh, with the spirit of accepting that I need help, right? Mm. Uh, and uh, of course, Peter progresses and uh, he's a, he's, he shows great leadership. Mm. Uh, but uh, he seems to also be critiqued, you know, mm. by, uh, by, by, the, by Paul at some mm. point because he's one guy by the day, mm. one guy by the night. Mm. And he's, he's, Paul calls him out, calls him out and tells him, please make a stand. You know, you cannot be saying <laughs> we are for the Gentiles, you know, during the day. And then at night, mm. you're saying, no, 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 Jews need to, I mean, Gentiles need to get into Jewish ways. Mm. And we find uh, a flip-flopping there uh, in terms of uh, his leadership, right? Mm. Can you just maybe explain to us that crisis? <clears throat> Um, again, I see Peter as a product of a culture. Mm -hmm. He's a product of a culture. And that culture has formed him all through his life. And there's a conflict within him because of that culture. Mm -hmm. And so he's at that point where the culture is too strong that he still needs to feel like he is following it. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, Paul is telling him, you are adding some law into salvation that was not there in the beginning. Mm. You, are, you are adding handles. You are actually telling the Gentiles they need this before they become. So what you are doing is you are actually working against the gospel you are preaching if you behave this way. Mm. And sometimes we find ourselves our words and our actions are not married. So our words are good, but when you are found at night, what you are doing is different. And he needed someone to confront him. Mm -hmm. And remember, uh, Paul is a late comer to salvation. He's not being confronted by the big apostle. No. Paul had just come to salvation. So Peter was, would write and say, I used to be with Jesus. Who are you? What are you telling me? I used to be with Jesus. You, you are the genuine. You, you used to be a kafini. You know, you used to be out there killing Christians. You have just come and you think you can now come and talk to the apostle. Mm. But at that point, Peter still listens to that instruction mm. because there will still be a conflict within us that need to be settled. Mm. We need to be rebuked and accept rebuke 
We also need to continue asking the Lord to transform us. Mm -hmm. But as long as we are on this side of earth, there are some weaknesses. But they're not bad. It is at that point where Jesus comes in mm. to change us. Yeah. And so I would say Peter was struggling with the culture. We still struggle with it even today. Mm. Uh, we still ask questions about people. Uh, we still feel like we don't want to it with certain people because of how maybe uh, they're different from us, mm. although they are Christians, but we feel no, no, no. Or maybe mm. even preach to some people. We feel like we shouldn't. But there are categories of people that the society has put in a corner that we Christians mm. must be the first ones to include them. Okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, just before we end, um, I find Peter uh, trying to balance, you mm. know, he loves the Gentiles. He was not being pretentious. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Peter was being pretentious. Mm. pretentious. He loved the Gentiles, mm. you know, because of all these memories that even I was included. I was there, you know, when I was sent to the house of Cornelius. Mm. So he loved the Gentiles. But there were the Jews also, his people. Mm. And uh, his people had issues. They had not really embraced the Gentiles as much. So he had to be play politics. Yeah, you know? it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as a leader, I, as a leader he, was, he was playing <laughs> politics like many people, many people would do when they, you are trying to lead many people mm. and uh, and these people have their facts these people have their facts as a leader sometimes you find yourself playing uh, politics and trying to balance things out and uh, the good thing is that we have pointers like Paul who tell us you know just take the truth mm. you know please come out clearly you know about what you were doing and I would say that uh, uh, even in the midst of his weakness it's a journey uh, it's not clear cut it is not his process is not cut clearly because we see him as a struggling Peter or mm. this we, this weakness at this point, this strength at this point, but what we know is that ultimately he ends up also dying for the faith. Mm. Mm. So even though he had conflicts all along, there's one thing that was sure that he was convicted. He walked as a convicted person. He had the conviction that he was on the side of God. Nothing could take that away from him. Mm. Even if it means being threatened by death, Peter did not chicken out the, the next time out when death knocked he did not chicken out. He mm. died for the faith. Mm. And so let us be people, even in the midst of so many things that we have to steer, always remember the hymn uh, that asks us the question, who is on the Lord's side? Mm. It's been a wonderful series talking about Peter, mm. insights uh, that we can learn as Christians and as leaders. And I would ask Pastor David to just close for us, uh, even as we look forward to the next series about the interesting, twisting things sometimes we find in the scriptures. Mm. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you because we know and we are assured that you resurrected from the dead. That fact, even during this episode, struck again. That fact is so great we can't ignore it. Mm. We thank you because, Lord, we are convinced that that resurrection stands right on our face and cannot be ignored. And our truth is based on that fact. Mm. Therefore, Lord, we ask for your making. We ask for your help in places where we are very weak. We ask for your help in places where we are quick to deny. Mm. Where we are quick, Lord, to judge others. Where we are quick sometimes to not forgive those who are forgiven. Lord, See our weaknesses and Lord, make them your points of entry. Mm. And Lord, be there a place where you need to be confronted by people. Confront us, oh God, so that Lord will continue the making process towards the end. And when time comes that our jobs will be on the line, time comes, oh Lord, our reputation is on the line for the gospel. And even when death would come for the gospel, that we will be like Peter saying, May death come, mm. but I deny not the Savior who died for me mm. and resurrected. Therefore, Lord, guide us as we continue with this series, as we continue again, gleaming in your scripture, O oh God, mm. continuing to learn more about you. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen.